Is adding sugar to your hot drinks harmful? This is a question that is mostly asked because generally sugar is really demonized. But come to think of it, between you and sugar, who is the real culprit? Welcome to this episode of ABCs of Life. I am Betty Awar, a food scientist working as an assistant technologist here in Kenya. And this is the channel where we learn to take good care of ourselves and to be our best versions. Yeah, let's dive in. There's so many misconceptions and assumptions about sugar intake, but in this video, I'll specifically talk about the free sugar that we add to our hot beverages. Uh, that is tea, hot chocolate, coffee, the cappuccino, espresso, yeah, those ones. Sugar is an important part of our diet that can be gotten in different forms, ranging from starch, complex carbohydrate to simple sugars. Currently, people have become very diet cautious. Many people are trying to minimize the amount of sugar they consume, but sometimes it is easy to undermine the much you actually consume. For you to understand this better, I'm going to break it down into four big questions that you should ask yourself. These questions will act as a guide as you monitor your sugar consumption. You can also apply this to other food components. Our first question is, how much sugar do you add to your hot drink? How much hot drink do you take per serving? How frequently do you take your hot drink? What usually accompanies your hot drink? These questions already point out that in nutrition, there is no one way fits all. There is no standard diet. Consider that these are just variations in the quantity that you consume. We've not put into consideration your body mass index, metabolic rate, physiological status, level of physical activities, uh, health condition that also influence the amount that your body needs. Nutrition is very relative and requires high level of understanding and awareness. So how much sugar do you add? Is it uh, two tablespoons per cup, three or six? Yeah, I actually listened to a certain video where someone was advising that as long as you can taste it, then that is just enough. But I feel it is misguided because some people have very sensitive taste buds to sweetness, which is good because they can put just a little and taste it. But others can only detect it when it is already too much. The sensitivity to sweetness is influenced by genetics, hormones, illness, weight, age, among others. Aside from sensitivity to sweetness, some people like their beverages strong. They want that strong coffee, strong tea. Yeah, so that hides the sweetness of sugar. Most published articles recommend two to three teaspoons per cup. But what cup? This brings me to our next big question. How much hot drink do you take per serving? A cup is relative. Some people use those small cups, the 240 ml cups, the standard ones. But here in Kenya, we generously take our tea. We use mugs like, uh, you see this one? This is bigger than the 240 ml cup. Yeah, but even if we don't use the mugs, we always have a flask next, next to us so that we can top up at any point. If you're a person who orders hot drinks from coffee shops, there's always the standard one and there's uh, the large cup of coffee. There's, I, I think I'll show them here so that you'll see the difference. Yeah, the bigger the cup, the more sugar it will contain. The larger the cup, the more sugar that you consume. If you're adding two uh, teaspoons of sugar in a 240 ml cup, then that will mean a double in a 500 ml cup. Our body will extract all that sugar and absorb it. It won't depend on the number of cups that you've taken. What it absorbs is the sugar that is in there because these are free sugar that is absorbed directly into the body. Sometimes it is very difficult to control the amount of hot beverage that you consume. You can take a big volume within a very short time, yet they have free sugar that is easily absorbed into the blood system. The quantity that you decide to consume may make that sugar bad for you. So this shows you that if you use the standard, that is two tablespoons of sugar in a 240 ml cup, the moment you consume more than that, then you are taking a lot of sugar. But if you consume just that, then you may be in the right right path. But some people are even more active. You may be using that sugar efficiently. This is one of the reasons nutrition is very relative and require complexity in understanding. This again brings me to our next big question. How frequently do you take your hot beverage? Look at these scenarios. Person A takes one cup in a day with the two teaspoons of sugar. Person B takes one cup per serving with the two teaspoons of sugar twice a day. 
person C continuously takes tea throughout the day because it is very cold. Who's better? As you ponder around that, let's bring our fourth big question. What usually accompanies your hot chocolate, tea, coffee? This is also very important because you may be reducing sugar for sugar. This is not a bad strategy, but you need to know if it is worth it. Better understanding of your diet wholesomely will help you to make the right choices and have a balance. This will enable you to enjoy your sweet treats once in a while because that is what they are for. Let's look at these scenarios. Person A takes a cup of tea with one teaspoonful of sugar but with muffins or cookies or white bread to boost the sweetness. Person B adds two teaspoonsful of sugar in a cup of tea and takes it with brown bread or sweet potato. Person C adds two teaspoonsful of sugar in a cup of tea and takes it with arrowroot or cassava. Person D takes sugarless beverages but consumes sweetened juices and fizzy drinks with processed carbs. Whose case is better? These questions clearly shows you how nutrition has got a lot of assumptions which brings about fear that prevents you from enjoying your foods. Limit your consumption of uh, sweetened juices, fizzy drinks and enjoy taking your cup of tea or coffee but ensure that they are accompanied with uh, complex carbohydrates that are natural. You can use uh, root tubers like arrowroot, sweet potatoes and cassavas. For those who have certain conditions or those who are keen in their diet, you can work with your nutritionist or just have a better understanding of nutrition before you make radical decisions based on internet information. When it comes to nutrition, I'll always tell you this. Try to have a balance, take everything in moderation, and variety is always a plus. I also do individualized meal plans, so if you are interested, I'll leave my email address in the description box below. Meal plan will take into consideration the foods that are available to you, your health condition, your level of physical uh, activeness, your BMI, yeah, all that. Thank you so much for listening to me. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've picked one or two things that you can apply. And please use the four big questions because they'll help you to have a balance, make informed choices, and also analyze your diet wholesomely instead of picking on one thing because of the standards that have been put in place.